Hello and welcome to Good Game Well Played. 28 episodes in and we are still the only show on ABC's iView and Good Game's YouTube channel about eSports. Yes! My name's Hingers and it's time for the news! Was that too much? Was that too much? Yes. The biggest LAN party in the world, DreamHack, and the company behind it, has been bought by Swedish media conglomerate, the Modern Times Group. DreamHack was inaugurated in 1994 and over the last 21 years has grown to be a huge digital festival with over 22,000 attendants at its main events and tens of thousands more at its satellite events across Europe. In recent years, DreamHack has also been host to esports events that attract pro players from around the world, competing in CSGO, Hearthstone, StarCraft, COD, Street Fighter and loads more. The new owners, MTG, spent over 30 million Australian dollars to buy DreamHack, and this follows on from the same company buying a majority stake in the Electronic Sports League back in July, meaning they now control two of the largest esports franchises in the world. Are they too powerful? The ABC couldn't possibly comment. And as part of ESL, the Dota 2 Frankfurt Major is underway in Germany as of last weekend. 16 teams from around the world have converged on Frankfurt to vie for over $3 million US in prize money. And after the first weekend, the eight teams in the upper bracket are EG, Vega, CDEC, LGD, Team Secret, Mineski, Vici Gaming, and Virtus Pro. Meaning all four Dota 2 regions, China, the Americas, East Asia, and Europe, are represented in the winner's bracket. The other eight teams will fight their way through the lower bracket before the finals, which wrap up this week. In fact, by the time you see this, we'll be knee deep in it. We'll have full results and drama in next week's episode. And in League of Legends news, rumours abound in China, where AD Carry Uzi is rumoured to be moving from Team OMG. According to Chinese sources, the one-time best AD Carry in the world is set to move back to former team Starhorn Royal Club for a massive 50 million RMB, which is over 11 million Australian dollars. This would break the record for the most money ever paid for an esports player, and in fact would be more than has ever been spent on an entire team. But as always, take these rumours with a grain of salt. And staying in China, one of the biggest esports teams in the world has folded. Team DK, who have competed in high-level Dota 2, League of Legends and Heroes of the Storm, has disbanded. The Chinese team have struggled to find top-tier success in recent years, including at BlizzCon earlier this month, where the Korean team they had bought went in as clear favourites, but were knocked out in the semi-finals. In a post on Weibo, translated on the Liquid Dota forums, team CEO Andy said, Five years, and we really gave it our all. Five years, many staff and players came and went. Five years, we've weathered hardships together. Five years, we experienced too much glory, too much regret, and too much emotion. <sighs> Brutal. Speaking of emotional tussles, League of Legends teams H2K and Team Solo Mid are locked in a very public spat over jungler Svenskeren. Svenskeren's contract with German team SK Gaming expired at the start of November, at which point both TSM and H2K made offers to sign the Dane, whose nickname means the Swede in Danish. The issue came down to the fact that Svenskeren was being offered both tryouts and starting positions at different times from the different teams, to the point where TSM even offered to pay H2K to guarantee Svenskeren a starting position if a tryout with TSM didn't go so well. They wanted this guy so much, they were willing to pay someone else to take him if they didn't want him. What? Some very public twit longers later from both H2K and TSM confused the situation further as portions of Skype chat logs were posted, accusations of lie and treachery were flagged, shots were fired, and the lawyers were called in. Eventually, Svenskeren did sign with TSM, or so we think, with TSM Reginald posting, Overall, H2K's final offer was greater than mine, but Svenskeren did not feel comfortable signing with someone who would use these kinds of tactics to sign a player. I hope this clears up any confusion concerning this situation. We will proceed to stand behind Svenskeren unless evidence comes to light that he actually signed a contract with H2K. Seems a bit passag if you ask me. We'll keep you updated as at the time of recording, Riot are yet to make a final ruling. All right, that is it for today's show. Next week will be our last episode of the year. So we'll be playing clips from some unseen interviews, doing a wrap up of the year and answering any lingering esports questions you might have. Will we be back next year? Will I be back next year? What am I doing? Or will we be revealed next week? And also next week on The Big Show, I'll be reviewing your friend and mine, StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. And they teach Bajo, the scrub, how to play. Oh no, we gotta go now Bajo, we gotta go. Oh, we're gonna die. We're gonna die so hard. So log on and honk that good game button.
That's all for this week. Hang us out. See ya.